What's up everybody? We are back with Wolf Tales. If you want to see more of this content or content like this, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. And uh, let's get back into this game. So, uh, man, we got back in like uh, both our, we lost both our wolf girls. And uh, we're going to turn back the clock and uh, load game like it never really happened. It was right here. Should I look back? Yeah, I should look back here. Whew. Okay. So, last time I I let her go, which led to that bad end. I don't know if this is like the the critical choice that will change that. So, let, let's find out. Till the ghost await. Let us... Hang on a second. Choto mate. I interrupt Mari mid-sentence, causing the wolf girls to look at me in surprise. I know what... what I know I said that you should leave, but I mean like right now. Stay here for tonight, eat well, sleep well, and prepare yourself for what you'll soon be facing. But I... I place my index finger on her lips and try as she tries to protect. You almost died twice in the short time we've known each other, Marari. Please, don't tempt fate a third time. Make whatever preparations you need tonight, then settle everything tomorrow. Would you do that for me, Mari? All right, I understand. If if you're the one asking, Joe, then I'll do as you say. Now, just hold on a minute there. We don't have time to play around any longer. Even if even now, our Ken must be you too, Fuyu. Huh? I placed my hand, which was resting on Mari's lips a moment, a moment ago, and on Fuyu's shoulder. I know you feel like you need to go right this second, without any delay, but please, just think about this for a second. Your friend needs urgent care, and Mari has just learned of her mother's death. Do you really think that rushing head first into the, the action, in, into the action, is the right thing to do? Well, that is... And of course, there's your own health to worry about as well for you. Mine? That's right. You're on edge, surprised, and feeling restless. You're worried about your kin, but also about your friends right here. If you go out there while your head is muggled, you're only going to wind up getting hurt. And the last thing I want for you is to end up in the same state as your friend here. Joe. With slightly redding cheeks, Fuyu opens her eyes wide and stares at me. <clears throat> yeah. Fuyu jumps back in surprise as her injured friend suddenly clears her throat. Honestly, you two, you, you allowed yourself to be charmed by human males so easily. I'm disappointed in you both, especially Fuyu. What happened to the curious soldier, the cautious shoulder, ah, my God, the cautious sho sho shoulder. No, I can't say that word. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. The cautious sh sh shoulder. No, soldier. Oh, I can't, oh, I'm so bad. The cautious sh soldier who despise humans and claim that they weren't to be trusted. Was this human male truly tamed in, uh, tamed you in sh such a short amount of time? Mario and Fuyu both look at their feet and as their friend chides them, the injured f f a wolf girl doesn't mince her words, nor does she display any joy in her face as she speaks. She truly is bewildered by the choices of her companions. That being said, the human may have a point. Your opponent is formidable. If you go out there without a plan, you'll likely wind up rushing to your deaths. Before you leave, let me explain to you in depth what is going on and who you are up against. Aha! There we go. For the next couple hours, the wolf girls talk to their friend while treating their wounds. Mirari, Fuyu, listen intently to the events that have transpired during their absence. From the search for Mirari to the avalanche and the coop, all the drama is recounted for the sake of the two girls. Mother, I had no idea. While we were idling around here, our pack has been... Yes, I'm afraid things haven't been going well since your disappearance, princess. Most of the problems we face are the result of recent weather conditions. Be as it may, the absence of a leader has naturally compounded the issue. I can't believe everyone fell to pieces the moment our leader perished. Functioning as a pack is a great and all, but when did we lose all our sense of autonomy? It's because I wasn't there. 
if I just stay put, then this would have all. Mario and Fuyu lament in the state of their pack. With heavy hearts, they regret their absence in the pack's time of need and the consequences of their actions. Even if they weren't directly responsible for anything that's happened, they understand the impact of the decisions. The one who's trying to take over, does he have support of the pack? Not especially. However, in the, in the time we were, we've lost a great number of our members and everyone is frightened, a strong male presence is not to be underestimated. The pack needs a leader now more than ever. If this matter is left alone, it won't be you long before the, he gains the pack support. That. that is troublesome. When you say strong male, do you mean... I meant literally yes. To be blunt, if both of you fought him at once, you wouldn't even stand a chance. If you are to defeat him in combat, you must come up with a solid strategy. Strategy, oh my god. Set traps, lure him into thin ice, use weapons from this human's house, do whatever it takes. Is fighting really the only way? Even if we defeat him, it won't bring back those who have already been killed. No, but it will secure your position as pack leader and restore the pack's stability. Even so. Don't worry, Hime. You need it lifting a finger. I will take care of that trigger all by myself. Fuyu, I understand how you feel, but don't you think you should take this man... I don't think you should take this man on solo. In a battle to the death, one more set of hands can easily sway the outcome. While the girls talk strategy, I head into the kitchen and start to make lunch. I try to focus on a task at hand, but this sandwich is too good. But for the most part, I find myself deep in thought. Tormented by the by the reality of what my guests will soon face, I begin to feel like our time together is finally about to come to an end. Having those two leave my home was supposed to be what I wanted from the very beginning. Yet, I, rather than see them off with a smile on my face, I should, I should have stopped them. Why? Why did I do that? Mari and Fuyu are going to return the pack, and... They, they will be reunited with their friends and family and resume their day-to-day -day lives. I'll return to my life of solitude. I won't need to take care of anyone else or show consideration for anyone else. I'll be able to live as I choose. This is what's best for everyone. I know it is. So why is it that I feel like I should get involved? I grab my pistol. As the day drags on, a solemn atmosphere fills the cabin. Fuyu, desperate to protect Marari, spends her time with the injured friend, thinking of ways to fight their common enemy. They look around the cabin for materials which can be fashioned to traps, talk about ways to rally their other wolves, and at all times they seem to be talking the matter quite seriously. Marari, on the other hand, separates herself from the others and sulks on her own. No doubt, haunted by the thoughts of her deceased mother, she remains silent, not saying or doing a thing until she mourns all by herself. While the girls do as they see fit, I try to give them as much space as I can. Contrary to how I feel, I do realize that this is a half-wolf matter, and not something which humans should get involved in. As much as it pains me to see a gentle, kind-hearted wolf girls in this state, I won't butt into their affairs. Um, excuse me, Joe? May I speak for you for a moment? Oh, Marari, there you are. What's up? I just wanted to speak to you about something, in private. I look past Marari and over to the other wolf girls. Zzz, no. <laughs> Fuyu and the injured wolf girl are both busy looking over a map, I lent them, and appear to be completely absorbed into what they're doing. We could probably talk about, uh, about it here, it seems those two are pretty distracted. Yes, I suppose you're right. Even so. Marari looks down at her feet in dejection. Whatever she wants to talk about, it seems that she really isn't, it really isn't something she's comfortable talking in front of others. Alright, why don't we just go to my room and talk in there? Can we? I mean, if it's not too much trouble. It's no trouble, just let me... Oh, uh oh, am I going to have to choose between them? Hey Joe, can I borrow you for a sec? Oh, choto mate. Can, can, can this wait for you? Mari and I were about to... Oh, no. Did you ask about the rope? Give me a minute, would you? That, that's what I'm asking about. 
So, Joe, we were just thinking about traps we could set up, and it seems like Fuyu inter intercepts me at the moment I'm about to leave to the room with Mirari. Seeing this, Mirari breathes a small sigh and tugs on my shirt. I'll, I'll be waiting. So, anyways, about the traps. Well, after supplying Fuyu with the information and the materials needed, she began to my trek outside. I began my trek outside. What? Why am I outside? Even though it's snowing a bit, it doesn't seem to take long before I spot Mariah's footsteps in the snow, leading a short ways from the house. Standing at the edge of the forest is Mirari, who seems to be off on her own little world. Mirari? Ah! Oh, Joe, I didn't hear you approaching. So, what was it that you want to talk about? It must be pretty serious if you don't want to talk about it in front of your own pack. It's it is precisely because they are my pack that I do not wish for them to hear this. Hmm? Joe, I've been giving this a lot of thought, especially after hearing about my mother's fate. The truth is, I don't think what I, I have what it takes to be the pack leader. At least not my own. Rari, who was concentrating on, on her feet a moment ago, looks me dead in the eye. Joe, I want you to join my pack. Oh yeah! I'm be a wolf man. Huh? You want me, a human, to join a pack of half wolves? I do. You're kidding me, right? I try to laugh off Mari's comp co comment. Eh. However, Mari shows no amusement in her face, nor does she appear to be joking. You really want me to join you? That's right. Why? I'm a human. I don't belong near your pack. Besides, even if you and Fuyu have warmed up to me, the rest of your pack won't accept me so easily. Once once I become pack leader, it won't matter what they think of you. Nobody will dare speak ill of the pack leader's mate. The pack leader's what? Uh. Mari quickly covers her mouth with her hands as her face turns bright red. No, that that is... As, as a male, I, I personally chose and brought... As a male, I personally chose and brought to the pack. It would only be natural for people to, um, you know. Mari begins to squirm as she casts her eyes towards the feet once more. Still ready to face, Mari looks up to me with upturned eyes. Would that really be so bad? You said last time it's okay as long as there's love, and I, I really do. Um, Mari's voice becomes barely audible as she forces herself to continue speaking. Anyways, that's what I've been thinking. Please, Joe, take your time and think about it. What I said, you could freeze your balls off in the wild with me. Suddenly, full, full of life once more, Mari exits in a hurry, covering her face with her hands as she runs in the cabin, quickly disappearing from my sight. As she runs off, all I can do is sit there, shocked, unable to fully comprehend what just happened. I must have heard Mari wrong. There's no way that she said what she just said, or there's no way what she said just now was what she only feels. I mean, if I were to take everything Mari just said at face value and took her words literally, then the logical conclusion would be that she wants this D and she loves me. Oh, nice sky shot. It's a beautiful. But I don't know, I have like a fireplace and you know, like refrigeration. As the morning sun settles, the inhabitants of my cabin all wake up bright and early. Following breakfast, la some last minute planning and a few concerned comments from the only human present, All we all meet in the living room once more. I don't mean to rush you princess, but if you are planning to lay traps before the confrontation, you best hurry. Time is of the essence. Your opponent will not wait for you to gather your wits. Yes, I know. We will leave momentarily. Fuyu, are you prepared to leave? Yes, Hime. I'm ready when you are. Excellent. In that case, we'll not dally any longer. Smiling resolutely, Mari turns to face me. Joe. Yes, Mari. While it pains me to leave you like this, I promise our pardon will not be for long. The kindness you've shown me until now shall not be forgotten, 
nor will I ever regret the time I've, we spent together. As long as I'm able, I shall come back and see you. Of course, you're welcome at any time. Same goes for you, Fuyu. Don't be a stranger. Hmm. I suppose it might be. I might be able to make my way. Ugh. I might be able to make some time for such outing. Only the princess escort, of course. She doesn't want to come back here, then neither do I. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well then, if nothing more needs to be said, I believe it's time for us to head off. We'll be back as soon as we are able. However, should the worst happen? Don't finish that sentence. You're both going to be fine. In fact, I'm sure you'll be back here pestering me in no time. I do hope so. Bowing her head respectfully, Marari turns around with a smile on her face. Fuyu carrying some supplies I lent the girls mimics Kamari's action, then follows straight after her. Mari opens the door, ushering Fuyu out first, then follows her out into the snow. A moment later, the door is shut, and at once, silent consumes the cabin once more. Well, am I hanging out with the injured wolf girl still? Oh, yeah. Left in the company of the injured wolf girl, I find myself pacing restlessly around the cabin as time slowly passes by. Watching the clock, waiting for something to happen, praying that the girls will be okay. I can't bring myself to relax or focus on anything unrelated to the wolf girl's plight. All I can do is curse my own inactivity as I worry about my former guests. Kasa! Why am I getting so worked up over this? The girls are going to be fine. They've been planning their attack carefully and the trigger has no idea that it was coming from him. They have my map and some crude traps that they made. And they probably even have the support of those who followed Mari's parents. This should all be a walk in a park. So why do I... Oh, for goodness sake, just go already. I almost jump at the surprise as my rainy guest suddenly piped up. Um, excuse me? You heard me. You've been pacing around with that worried look on your face ever since those two left. If you're just going to spend the entire time worried about them, why don't you just chase after them? They should be setting up... They should still be setting up, assuming that they've arrived yet. If you hurry, you should be able to catch up to them. I shake my head and sigh. <sighs> I can't do that. This is a half-wolf matter. A human like me shouldn't get involved. Oh, please. It's a little too late to say that now. You're already involved, whether you like it or not. The, wolf, the injured wolf girl sits up on the couch and looks directly into my eyes. I don't know what's gone between the three of you in this cabin, but the smell of pheromones is coming from those girls is overwhelming. They want your D so bad, even I, they won't even admit it. I'm sure they, at least one of them has their eyes set on you. As soon as you take one of them to be your mate, you'll part your pack anyway. You'll be a part of our pack anyways. Ugh. My eyes open as the wolf girl's words begin to register. Despite my insistence that I'm unrelated to the pack's business and that I should keep my nose out of their affairs, it seems that the girls do not feel the same way. Take one of them to be my mate? He couldn't be, could it? Mari's offer and her calling to me as the pack leader's mate. No way. It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Why not end your suffering and go after him? I'm sure they'll be happy to see you. Besides, the wolf girl's suddenly the wolf girl's eyes suddenly narrow. They're gonna need your all the help they can get. They what? What do you mean by that? Exactly what I said. They made all the preparations we could in a short amount of time, but I doubt that'll be enough. When it comes down to a direct confrontation between those two and the traitor, they will without a doubt be slaughtered. Slaughtered? No. But Mari's the rightful heir, isn't she? Surely he'll give up, or the other members of the pack will help them. I wouldn't count on that. The second he sees the princess, he'll kill her. No matter who is around, and the witness... And who, who, ugh, no matter who is around to witness this, such an act, our pack responds to strength. Above all else, the, pin the princess cannot defeat the potential usurper, and then she'll not be accepted anyways. No way. I thought facing that guy was the last resort, not a necessity. If those two have to fight him by themselves, they'll be... <gasps> Without another moment of thought, I run towards the sword room and grab my axe. In response to my se second action, the injured wolf girl smiles at me sincerely for the first time. Best of luck, human. Go and protect your mate, no matter... What hardship lies in your wake? Shing! Without a spare moment, I res to respond to the girl's words, I nod absentmindedly, and then run out of the living room. 
I jump in my trunk, place the app in my lap, and start the engine. Before the injured girl can react to the noise of the engine, I drive out into the snow, throwing caution to the wind. I followed the path to pull you once let me down. Alright, this should be it. If I recall, the path is here. Where there was once a pile of snow blocking the path, there's now level ground. Whether someone cleared it out or nature simply taking his course, I don't know. All I, can, all I care about is the fact that I can keep driving right down to the den of Fuyu Murari. Wait for me, girls. I'm coming! I continue to drive through the snow, uh, no longer sure which direction I'm supposed to be heading. I've never gone this far around the mountain before. I have no way of knowing if I'm heading towards the girls' den or the, in the complete opposite direction. Kassa! What did the map say again? Ah, I knew I should have kept track, kept in a truck. Just as frustration threatens to take over, I notice something in the distance. A few figures moving around in the snow. Two of them are quickly circling around one another, while the third takes distance. As I grew closer, I recognized to two of the figures. Fuyu! Murari! And that must be... I clutch the axe on the rest of my lap as I focus on the third party. Facing off against Fuyu is a large creature, more wolf than man and easily several times her size. Fuyu is fighting, but clearly tired, and against the giant towering over her, she doesn't stand a chance. Shit! 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 Rather than slowing down, I press my foot against the accelerator harder than before. My truck increases speed, treating, threatening to spin out of control in any moment as I rec rapidly gro approach my target. Fuyu! Jump! Wah! Oh, they gotta run that bitch over? <laughs> Jumping out in the way of time, narrow, Fu Fuyu narrowly avoids being hit by my truck. Her opponent, however, is not so lucky. <laughs> Kassa! I'm losing control of the wheel. Kassa! Oh. Without a moment to spare, I undo my seatbelt and grab my axe and bail out of my truck. A few seconds later, the truck swerves off the side of the mountain, descending who knows how many miles before meeting its untimely demise. Joe! Why are you here? <sighs> uh, Tarbeck! I just shoved out a moving vehicle with, with an axe. Oh, I did hit him pretty hard, but I, I, I don't think he'll be enough to kill that bastard. As of responding to my words, I feel a presence manifest behind me. I turn around and swing my axe wildly, hoping to nail the wolf in the head. Unfortunately, my luck appears to have run out. Uh, human filth. Uh, I feel uh, uh, my axe uh, strikes the wolf in what I assume to be his rich cage. Unfortunately, my attack only serves to enrage the beast. The next moment, he swipes his mighty claws sideways, ripping my axe from my hands. Swing! Uh, before I can so much reach for a weapon, the wolf pounces on me, pinning me to the ground. Die, human! Ah! Uh, my eyes widen as the human raises his claws, pinned to the ground with no hope to escape. I watch in terror as the lumbering razor sharp appendage swings down. With more weight and precision behind it than I could dare to imagine, time appears slow to a halt as death beckons to me all too soon. Get away from my mate! Gah, you stupid little! Come here! Hime, you'll pay for that traitor. The moment I resign myself to death, I open my eyes and find an unbelievable sight. Despite the difference in their size and the sheer hopelessness of the, our situation, Mario and Fuyu desperately fight off the alpha male. You girls, what are you doing? You should have taken the opportunity to run away. I could never do that. How could I possibly run away with my tail between my legs while you save me yet again? For Forget about keeping score. We're talking about life and death here. You should flee and save yourself. Never. Even if I lose my life, I will not let you down again. Fuyu and I will hold him off while we while we do that. Please escape. Yeah, right. I didn't come all this way to watch this chump like take you both out. I raise my feet and grab my axe as I do so. There are only two ways I'm leaving this place. As a corpse or together with my mate. Alright everybody, uh, I hate to leave it as a cliffhanger right here, but I gotta do what I gotta do. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode. 
please leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and I'll see you there. Bye.